der Tender Spirits Podcast. Wir vertreiben ausgewählte Flaschen für Restaurants, Bars und Highballer. Und hier geht es um die Menschen und Orte hinter diesen Flaschen. Wo kommen sie her? Und ziemlich wichtig, wer macht sie warum auf? Herzlich willkommen zurück zur dritten Episode des Tender Spirits Podcast. Wir sind immer noch gedanklich und in der Nachbearbeitung in England und besuchen die Apple Gin Distille. Mit Walter Riddle habe ich im ersten Teil unserer vier Interviews mit den Apple Five, einer fehlte leider, gesprochen. Und heute treffen wir uns mit Chris Garden. Chris Garden kam eigentlich als letzter zu den Apple Five. Es war ein großer Zufall, denn... Ähm, Valentine, Walter, äh, Nick und Capri hatten bereits angefangen, die Destille war gebaut, man wollte loslegen, der famose Prozess war definiert, man brauchte nur noch einen guten Destiller und äh, der geschätzte Valentine war in London auf einer Party bei Sipsmith Gin, dem legendären Gin, eigentlich dem ersten Craft Gin, der wieder in England hergestellt wurde, klassisch auf kleiner Brennblase. Und äh, man kannte sich gut und man hat sich so bei ein bis 14 Tonics leicht verhaftet und dann sagte Valentin irgendwann zu den Inhabern, sag mal, wo ist eigentlich euer Distiller, Chris? Und dann haben die gesagt, oh, hör uns auf, ey, super Typ, aber irgendwie kriegt er jetzt das zweite Kind und äh, ja, er ist mit seiner Frau jetzt, sie wollte zurück zu ihren Eltern und die wohnen irgendwo bei Newcastle in Nordengland und da ist er jetzt hin und will Bier brauen. Und äh, Valentine natürlich völlig außer sich, hat sein Handy nachts aus der Tasche gerissen und den armen Chris nachts in Newcastle oder in der Nähe auf Newcastle angerufen, denn die Apple Destille, oder die jetzige Apple Destille, ist nahezu fast bei Newcastle. Und er hat gesagt, was machst du? Du musst sofort bei uns arbeiten. Und so ist es dann auch gekommen. Und Chris ist jetzt, äh, nachdem er sozusagen jahrelang Qualität und äh, Prozess bei Sipsmith erfunden, gesichert und was ich was alles hat, ähm, ist er jetzt, das steht er jetzt von Anfang an Happy Gin und noch ein paar andere Sachen, Douglas Fur und ein paar coole Sachen und ist sozusagen Meister des Prozesses. Hat ihn nicht äh, erfunden, diesen schrägen Prozess, wie Aromen äh, extrahiert werden, aber perfektioniert ihn jeden Tag. Ein ganz toller Typ. Äh, ein angenehmer Nerd. Äh, Finde ich ganz toll. Also viel Spaß mit dem äh, Destillateur, mit dem Brennmeister, mit Chris Garden von Apple Gin. So, cheers. Cheers. Sitting here with uh, Chris Garden and the magic... I don't know how many square meters, it's quite small. It's two rooms. It's two rooms. How many square meters is it here at the Happel Distillery? <sighs> Only the distillery. 50, maybe. Yeah, maybe 50. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We are surrounded by some mystical and geeky stuff, which you will <laughs> explain me in a second. Absolutely. So we are super proud to uh, bring over your lovely and delicious uh, juice uh, for Tender Spirits to Germany. I'm a big fan of it. First Thank of you. all, I mean, the taste killed me. I liked it because I thought this is what gin should be in a very elegant way. Juniper, juniper, juniper. Absolutely. And then in the beginning I only know one person behind all of you. I learned it's five. The, the, the happy five I call them. Yes. And uh, I know Nick, but then I get in touch with the others. And then I learned, especially yesterday, that you are the mastermind behind the daily work of doing it. Absolutely. The, the, the piecing together of the, the puzzle as it were and Making sure we, we have a consistent quality gin, yeah. um, you know, out there and working w with Val and Nick, you know, to create this amazing gin has been uh, a brilliant, fun journey. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, uh, you know, Nick and Val are, the way that they combine flavors is just a pleasure to work with. And then to, to be able to, to make the gin mm -hmm. uh, is, yeah, you know, it's, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. No, I agree and I thought yesterday how crazy it is and this is why I like to have a little sit down with you and uh, explain it because I think it's, yeah, I think it's, um, you explained it yesterday quite well. So I, I, I also understand it, but I mean, I would love to understand uh, how Apple is done, why you have chosen to go this path, the way you do it, very unusual. Absolutely. We, we wanted to take, you know, gin for us is all about juniper and we wanted to put juniper back at the heart of gin. 
Uh, and to do that, we sort of wanted to capture more of the flavor spectrum of juniper. Uh, and to do that, we've got three pieces of equipment. We start with a, a copper pot still that we make a one-shot gin on. Uh, and that's really the sort of the base. That's where we start. And then we layer flavors from our vacuum still uh, and our supercritical extraction column onto that. So the vacuum still allows us to distill at a lower temperature. By distilling at 150 millibars, we reduce the boiling point of alcohol. We go from 78 degrees, which is what we're distilling on the copper pot still, to 40 degrees. So we capture lighter, fresher flavors that would be destroyed on the copper pot still. Um, and we actually distill six botanicals individually on the vacuum still, five of which we harvest from Heppel. So right on our doorstep, we harvest them fresh, distill them fresh, and we capture that light, fresh notes. It really adds a sort of zing to the gin, and it gives us that freshness that we, that we want to put back into, you know, we want to make the gin all about juniper, but we want to give it a sort of freshness. We want to make it perfect for a martini, brilliant in a basil smash. We want to add that freshness back to the gin. Uh, the, the six botanicals we distill, we've got Douglas fir, bog myrtle, lovage, black currant leaf, Amalfi lemon peel, and the green juniper. And it's Maybe really. Amalfi lemon peel is not coming from. It doesn't sadly grow in the wilds of Northumberland. <laughs> a few more crazy summers, we might be able to plant a few lemon trees. Currently, and I'm not allowed to go to the Amalfi coast yet either uh, to harvest them, but. But um, You're not allowed. I'm not allowed. Okay. We, we need to sell a bit more gin first before okay, I can, I I can I go on some trips. But the green juniper really is the star of what we put through the vacuum still. It's in, it's in the gin in the biggest uh, quantity. Um, and it really it gives us that little bit of spe the, the, the flavor spectrum of the juniper that you don't get from the ripe juniper. Mm -hmm. You get the sort of fresh green apples, cedarwood, sandalwood flavors that you don't get from ripe juniper. And it really is, uh, through the vacuum still, it gives us this, this, this stunning freshness to the gin. Um, and then on the, on the, on the super critical, we apply high pressure. So we, we're, we're talking about 3,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. We apply that to, to ground up ripe juniper, uh, a little bit of heat as well. So at 40 degrees and 3,000 PSI, we create this super critical fluid. So it's not, a, it's not a liquid, it's not a gas, it's a liquid and a gas. So it can permeate space like a gas, but extract flavor like a liquid. Um, and it really squeezes the soul out of the juniper. We get this beautiful golden oil, and it's, it, it's, it's like the root, the needles, the berries. It's the full spectrum of flavor, and it really gives a depth to the gin. And it, it, it's when you combine the pot still, the vacuum still, and the supercritical extraction, you just get this gin that sings. You know, it really... The flavor lasts, it doesn't disappear, it's full of juniper, it's full of sort of tropical notes. It's, that, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just a delicious gin. Mm -hmm. I, hope, I, hope, I hope people no, agree. I agree, I agree, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So the three steps you decided to kind of create, and I always, for me, I told uh, Walter as well, for me it's like stealing in a good way from this like culinarical kitchen, foodie, nerdy world to bring mm. in like vacuum and super critical extraction to, to just get the whole spectrum of what's possible with juniper. Absolutely, that full spectrum. And, and you know, gins nowadays have departed, I feel, from juniper. And the only way we could really make a gin that's juniper focused is to kind of innovate mm -hmm. and create a new way of putting more flavor into the gin. And, and by having the super critical extraction and the vacuum still, we're getting that fuller spectrum. Mm -hmm. of juniper, mm -hmm. totally which, is, which is what we set out to do. Um, and it, it, it makes us relevant in the gin market yeah. by having more juniper in the bottle. Yeah. So for all these, like, uh, in a quick summary, first is copper still. Copper pot also still. Still me, this is a London dry gin, he explained it. Absolutely. Then it, you do the vacuum... Uh, vacuum distillation. Distillation, yeah. which makes it a distilled gin still. Uh, yes, and yes. Then you add some super intense juniper oil exactly which you, it's very strange how you make it and then finally it's just a gin so you, it, you go back just, in quality to make gin. the most quality juniper it, it, not it, back you don't no, get no, yeah, 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 yeah. quality is always high no, absolutely you go back in legislation it, it takes us yeah. five times longer to make yeah. than your average pot still gin we've got the sure. pot still the vacuum still the super critical the harvesting of the botanicals and the sorting of the botanicals yeah you know so could you for for all the gin lovers and geeks and freaks explain a little bit the, the single step so what's happening in the other room we show later the copper still 
What you have a what type of copper still you use? It's a Muller copper pot, Muller. Still, 340 liters. A stunning piece of uh, engineering, beautiful. <coughs> German. <coughs> German, absolutely. The best stills are uh, Karl, Holstein, um, yeah. Muller, absolutely. Yeah. We've got a, a lot of copper surface area, and yeah. we're just trying to get as much copper contact between the spirit um, and the copper as possible to, to smooth it, to get rid of the fatty acids and the sulfates. Yeah. So you buy the, the, the grain alcohol? We buy, what, what alcohol is it? Just it's, it's English wheat, yeah. distilled to 96% alcohol by volume. Yeah. And it really is a blank canvas. You mm -hmm. know, that's all it is, it's just alcohol. We don't want any flavor from that base spirit. We yeah. want to add all the flavor from the botanicals. Um, and that, that, that's the starting point. We distill that through the copper pot still to give us uh, what we call the base gin, a London dry gin that we then add. It's, it's very much the sort of the skeleton and the meat and the flesh comes from the vacuum still and the supercritical what, extraction. What, uh Botanicals you use in this first destination project? Absolutely. So we've got um, Macedonian juniper, a bit stronger, a bit punchier. Italian juniper, uh, lovely sweetness to it. We've got English coriander, we've got licorice root, angelica root, orris root, very classical sort of gin botanicals. Um, we've got black currant leaf, black currant, not so traditional, but they add a nice sort of uh, citrusy, black currenty note. Um, And, 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 you know, we kind of left holes in the recipe so that we could add more juniper uh, from the other, the mm -hmm. other, the other uh, pieces of equipment. Nice. So then uh, it's done, but you do a, you told me you do a one shot. A one shot. shot. Sorry, one shot. One shot. <laughs> sorry, sorry, we do one, one <laughs> shot. Absolutely. So we're not making a gin concentrate. Um, yeah. Every, uh, every bit of alcohol has been through the still. We're not. We're not blending with neutral alcohol afterwards. You know, what we, the heart cut that we take, we then dilute with the water directly, and that's the base. We're not, we're not back blending with neutral spirit. You know, we do it in that one shot manner to just, to get the best gin possible. And then you take the liquor, so then that's the ABV of, I don't know. So it comes off the still at about 88%. Yeah. We then blend it with our spring water yeah. to 45%. Yeah. And then you bring it on. And then you have this London dry gin, the, yes. the, the base. And then you, you on, the, on the separate way, you, you do this with a vacuum still, you do six different... Six different uh, distillates. Um, And then we, we've got a recipe that we know to blend, it. to blend it. So we know how many liters we get from the base. We yeah. know how many liters of the, the, the lemon, the, the black currant, the lovage to drop into. And then it took us about, you know, pretty much a year to get that recipe so that you What weren't... What did you do with all the rest of it? I mean, you, 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 <laughs> it's behind us. Okay, uh, okay. You, you did I, it in small amounts. Small amounts. It was a fun year, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, But it, you know, we wanted a well-balanced gin. So yes, we talk a lot about juniper, but there's so much more flavor to it. And it's got that lovely dry finish. We wanted that well, you know, we wanted lots of juniper, but we didn't just want to be slapped in the face with juniper. We wanted it to be well-balanced and you do get a lovely dry finish uh, on the gin. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then on a separate machine, you have this super critical extraction where you put lots of pressure. Lots of pressure. Yeah, How much? Um, you told me you, it's like 800 grams. So we've got 800 grams giving us about 20 mils of extract. Oh, and it's, it's, the, it's the closest, you know, it's very much used in the perfume industry, this machine. And it gives you the closest representation to juniper. So it, it, it literally is like having actual juniper in the gin. Mm -hmm. you, you squeeze the berry, you smell it and then you smell the oil, it's exactly the same. It's called the absolute. And, and you know, flavor archive houses use it. You know, if, if every juniper bush in the world dies, this machine gives you the closest representation to what juniper used to be. Mm -hmm. Nice. And it, 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 it's, it gives you flavors that you just can't get from distillation. Cool. So, this is Hapogen. You came up with something Kind of new, I'm not sure if it's like, but we also have a few bottles at Tendersport to send us. Uh, the um, Douglas fir. The Douglas fir, absolutely. So we also have the same idea, like, now you created these different steps of extracting flavor, and now you bring in also, or you focus on other flavors like the Douglas fir. So that's a kind of, you call it flavored vodka? Uh, we, we, legally, we legally, have yeah. to call it a flavored vodka, but it's anything but a vodka. A vodka yeah. traditionally odorless, flavorless, you know, it's a neutral yeah. spirit. This is full of flavor. Um, and when we were using the vacuum still to do the Douglas fir, we, we were 
all the time were tasting everything. Mm -hmm. And we were just blown away by the Douglas fir that came off the vacuum still. Yep. You know, in the middle of uh, Northumberland, we've got this amazing tropical flavored notes coming through the, pie, through the needles. It's not just pine, but it's just, it's melon, it's grapefruit, it's, it's incredible. And we just felt that it was too good not to develop as a drink. So we put the needles through the, through the copper pot, it's exactly the same sort of technique get the base and then build flavors on top of it. So we've got the pot stilled Douglas fir needles, we've got the vacuum stilled Douglas fir needles and the super critically extracted uh, Douglas fir needles as well. And we played around with the quantities, the di you know, how much base, how much vacuum, how much CO2. And I, I think we're, we've got this drink that is, um, it's full of flavors that that you wouldn't expect from Douglas fir. And it's a, it's a wonderful drink for bartenders to play around with. It, it gives people, um, it, you know, you can make twists and a classic drinks with it. And it just, it's something fun to play with, mm -hmm. but delicious at the same time. Cool. So that's the idea of maybe half all distillery to fail. Let's see what we can on one side have here. Absolutely. And if we use our system, what can we uh, what, what, you know, but with the access to nature that we've got on our doorstep and the equipment that we've got in the distillery, the, the, the flavor possibilities are kind of endless. And we, we love to experiment and play around. And Nick just creates wonderful drinks yeah. um, with the spirits that we make. So it's, it's, it's just fun, you know, it's, it's to, to create different flavors and Val goes out and picks something and we distill it and it's like, oh, that didn't work. Or yes, that works. It's just brilliant fun. Nice, nice. So can I ask you, what's your, why are you becoming a distiller? What's the, if uh, I'm allowed to ask Yeah, you. of course you are. I'm, um, I, I did uh, an engineering course, so chemical engineering, uh, you know, oil and gas extraction. Just not as much fun as, as whiskey and beer. Want to do some money? Uh, <laughs> I, there's, but to begin with, yeah, absolutely. Money and travel, that's all I wanted to do. And then I, I did the course and I thought, oh God, this is not, this is not going to work for me. Um, so I thought, what, what's close to chemical engineering? And I did, uh, I found a brewing and distilling course up at Harriet Watt. And I learned how to make beer and whiskey. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, very simple chemical engineering, separation of alcohol and water, very easy, um, but very fun. And, um, you know, I must have done the course about 13 years ago. Um, and then uh, a company called Sipsmith came along mm -hmm. and uh, I worked for them for, for four weeks as an intern. And I didn't leave for five years and, and really saw the birth of uh, the new gin movement. You know, making gin how it should be made yeah. at Sipsmith, a very traditional London dry gin. Left Sipsmith, you know, uh, still a massive fan of the guys, you know, good friends. And um, I thought I'll never make a gin in the north. And then I met, I met Walter and he, he showed so me the land. The story land. was you were moving from London to Exactly, Newcastle I moved to Newcastle. For for, well, we, we had, um, my wife, we had one child yeah. and my wife said to me, We'll have a second child. I was very much told. Yeah. And uh, when, when <laughs> we have... Do you have three? <laughs> I, I have three now, yeah. yeah. I know, it's a great number. It's yeah. the magic number. Yeah. The triple technique, the three kids. Yeah. Um, and, and London just wasn't where we wanted to bring up children, yeah. you know. So we moved back to where my wife's from, Newcastle. And I mm -hmm. thought there'll never be a small batch distillery in Newcastle. And, and then by circumstance, Val heard that you... Val, Val was at a party at Sipsmith. He was like, where's Chris? And uh, they said, oh, he's left. He's moved to Newcastle. Val was like, just hold my ming, drink ming, a ming, second. Ming, 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 ming. I've just got to make a phone. Literally half past 11, he phoned me. Uh, Val, what, what, what? You know, when you get a call from Val, you're like... You know, it's, you, better it's, pick it up. you better pick it up. Yeah. As no matter how, no matter if you've you know been asleep for two hours. Oh, well, hi, hi. You got to meet Walter. You got to meet Walter. You got to see what we're doing. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. And I came so out. So they to started to build this without having a distiller. They they had the concept. Yeah. So they'd done some vacuum distillations on a little lab still. No, no. Um, Cabri, Cabri knew the, about supercritical extraction. Today, exactly. He's, he's, he, the he's a biochemist. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. I came out here, and it is the most beautiful place with. Uh, the botanical Eden, and then combined with the equipment and the, the, the concept of putting juniper back at the heart of gin, but pioneering a new way of extracting more flavor, you know, sort of making a modern classic gin. Uh, I was like, yeah, okay, we've made a timeless classical gin in, in London with Sipsmith. Let's advance that. Let's get more juniper into the gin. 
um, let's have a bit of fun, you know. Mm-hmm. And then obviously with Nick making the drinks and, and Val foraging the botanicals, it, it was it's the dream team, you know. I have a question uh, because I think maybe I'm wrong, maybe you can correct me, but I think like the Stiller has become a little bit more popular nowadays. So oh, absolutely. Maybe, there's maybe more people now into it because it sounds so wow, we do a gin, we do whatever. But it's always interesting when I visit like small places like Apple. Technically, it's about in the beginning to be like very self-controlled because the idea is to do each day the same. Yes. It's a like more like a classic production. Absolutely. You always have to make sure about, I mean, you need your consistency, you need your experience, you need to taste the raw material, you need to, but technically it's more like, because sometimes I feel a bit, there's a comparison to bartending when it became famous. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, yeah, I want to do cocktails. (laughs) But the business of bars is about making the same drinks each night, being consistent, having a menu. It's not about super creative every night. There's exceptions. Yes. Uh, and I think it's the same, isn't it? For I mean, it's. Uh, but I mean, you grow up with it. You expected it like this. Uh, absolutely. You know, we um, we've, we've got the gin. It took us a long time to develop the gin. Now it's about making sure that we harvest the needles at the right time. We harvest the green juniper at the right time. And it's about making sure that every bottle of Heppel is as good and as consistent as the first bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's kind of the day job, as it were. And then the fun side is developing drinks like the Douglas Fir, the Slow and the Hawthorne. We've got other drinks in the pipeline, but everything rests. You know, this is the bedrock. You know, yep. that that's uh, not the Holy Grail, but that is um, what it's all about: is the gin, and that's what I I love. I absolutely love gin. Mm-hmm. You know, um, everything else is is fun, and it's all about taking drinks, extending them to the next level by using the triple technique to get more flavor out of the ingredients. Um, But you're absolutely right. Making the gin consistent is is the number one priority. And then, I mean, now you, I like the idea of what's happened standing for is like bringing flavor from ingredients they grow you with a special technique in the bottle. Absolutely. And now you kind of, you, you have this Douglas fir. I know some rumors about some other projects, but (laughs) I think it's the same idea. It's the same idea. It's absolutely... Very interesting things from here. Very unusual. I I really like what you guys do. Well, thank you very much. It's it's fun, you know, and hopefully people enjoy the gin. And it is, um, it's a new way. It's a modern classic, which is... Uh, it's just very important to us that we take a classic uh, drink like the gin, we put more flavor into it, and it yeah. gives bartenders more options uh, to create better drinks with it as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Very cool. Thanks a lot. No, so thank, will, you. Uh, thank you. Try to catch Val. Yes. Cheers. Hopefully not another drink. No, it's <laughs> lunchtime. Not even. It's 11. It's, it's 11. It's a perfect yeah. time for a, for so a gin. I have a martini. With, okay. It's a, a tough job. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.